Because there's a part of us which is the creative personality. Mm. See, you're many different Michaels, and I'm many different Ricardos. You're not the same Michael when you're creating a new dish as you are when you're figuring out what you said. How do I, you know, make this business work and right, profitable? Right, right. Yeah, it's a different hat. And how do I, well, who's the Michael that then is the friend of so-and-so or the husband of so-and-so or the father of or the yeah. brother or the this or the that or the political entity or the fill in all the blanks. Each one of those is a different facet of us. Mm. And the artist is a different facet of us too. That's why you can... As an artist, artists can create things, and, and it's usually that's how it works, that is not the emotion they're experiencing at that moment. Mm -hmm. I can write a poem about, I don't know, anger, and hopefully I'm not angry when I'm writing it, right. because then it's going to be a lousy poem about anger. It's better to reflect on that emotion, and, and, and then I've systematized it, and now I'm writing from a different perspective on it. Um, so the the artist will think and feel things that the rest of us of who you are may not even agree with right may I not feel, even agree I with i feel that 100 percent. right so that's when you know that you're dealing with a real artistic creation let me ask you so um in that moment of creation mm -hmm. and and i and i it's tough because it you just going back to what you said like 30 seconds ago you wear several hats you know and you're in you are several versions of yourself in that moment and you act a certain way in that moment and that moment of creation i feel like is very pure i feel like it is that that person that it is that child inside of you that is uh, the one that is always fighting to get out i All feel right. So for me personally, uh, in the role that I, I have, which is several versions of like the business owner, the operator, the boss, the best friend, the person for you to talk to. And then you have that one moment of creation, which <clears throat> sometimes is rarer than others. Because when you have that pure moment of creation, it is like it's... It's almost like it's new every single time, I feel. Because people ask me, it's like, so what do you do to get in the mood to come up with new food? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, it's fucking different every time. There's only one answer. I live. That's true. That's it. But, but living is, it's, it's interesting because we live this monotonous life right now, especially this year, right? This year, it's always, it's all about like fear and what's happening and should I be scared and should I be worried about what's happening tomorrow and next week mm -hmm. and how are we going to pay these bills? And then you have this like, uh, I, I, I came up with a new dish today and I came over and I showed it to Nick. And the reason why it showed me so much was because I was in, I was alone in a room and I simply just looked around myself and thought to myself, what was the best thing to do right now? You can't sit in a room like, you know, because I have an office and I never had an office in my life and I have an office now. And I, you can't sit in an office and think about food wise, what's going to connect the best. Mm -hmm. You can only be around the food and right. connect it all. Sure. So in that moment, I was like, well, you know, I looked around and Guava George, which is a legend in Miami, uh, had given us some plantains and I was like, well, we have these and we have that and we have this and let's just put it all together. And I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was something that I was like, wow, this is probably one of the better dishes I've ever created. And it was through so much garbage, like of the day, like so many clouds to fight through, to find that creation moment. I feel like is what really dictates a true artist. You know, like, because they have to fight through so many personal battles and so many demons of whatever they live through. And you see it in their art. You see it in their moment. For food, I don't think it relates the same way. Because food, people consume, they eat, it satisfies them. They go home and they go to sleep. 
this art lives up on a wall forever. And I, I, I often wonder to myself, is there going to be a moment in 20 or 30 years that people are like, man, that dish at that moment really spoke to me? I, I, I won't know until that time. But it's interesting to talk about like the art world and the food world and how they coexist, but they fight each other at the same time. You use the word beauty. And that's, I think, the crux. Um, beauty can be experienced in so many different ways. In tastes and smells and in, in images and in, in words on a page. And beauty, as Robert Frost once was asked, you know, what is a poem? And his response was, a poem is news that stays news. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So it's something new and it stays new. We can still stand in front of Renaissance masters. You can stand in front of a Velasquez painting. You can listen to, you know, Bach or, you know, whoever, Verdi. And they're still fresh. They're still new. Yeah. They're new because every, and you can see the same play a hundred times, or you read the same poem any number of times, or the same movie. And it has a new dimension because you're experiencing it from jump, even though you've already experienced it many times. And, and you discover things in yourself and in the piece that make it new right now. And it will be new if it's a real work of art. Now, in terms of the, the culinary arts, the dish emerges if you're you're creating these dishes because they're emerging out of a tradition that you're that you are working with and innovating and and using it as as a language but the, the language of poetry is is the language everybody uses but the poet uses it in a different way right. and that's what makes it a poem and you're you're you know it's not just that you're throwing ingredients together and da da because it, in the same way a poem isn't just a bunch of words thrown together, or well, some poems nowadays are like a bunch of words thrown together, but let's not go there. Uh, <laughs> so is food. It's a bunch of shit on a plate right. that's just thrown together. So I feel you. Right. But when you're talking about beauty, when, when you can walk away from the experience that you've experienced something timeless, meaningful, alive, mm. alive in the sense that it also escaped from the artist's intention. Yeah, it was you know? too much for them even at the moment. Yeah, because imagine if you pulled Shakespeare out of the grave and, and then hit him with, let's say, everything Freud and everyone else has said about his work, he'd probably have a heart attack and plop right back in. Right. Right? Because culture grows and its appreciation of the artwork changes. So now the artist is aware of that in a, just in a basic way and not aware of what will, how it will live in the future. Mm -hmm. And and this is just like a uh, an effect of the creative process that the artist can't control, can't predict, can't navigate, can't pilot. You can only more or less talk to the past, redirect it in the present, and set it free. And if it's beauty, it is timeless. 